So first off, I wasn't expecting that. Two, look, Tekken 8 is coming out. We know a lot, a lot of new people will be getting into it. So we feel like it's only fair and it's the right time to explain some of these characters. But it's not regular explaining. It's Steve explaining. We're going to start with Claudio and we have 20 seconds. Me, I have 20 seconds to talk about Claudio. Oh, you already started? All right. Claudio, one of the archers of Sirius, was introduced in Tekken 7 and was actually contacted by Heiachi and the Mishima Zaibatsu because he wanted to capture and trap the Devil Gene. They know that they're Supreme Exorcist, 15 seconds, Supreme Exorcists that actually have been controlling the European infrastructure for years. And I actually thought Claudio was a bad guy, but he's really not. And he has his own kind of motivations to stand alive in Tekken 7. And this is a Tekken 8 thing. Boom, done, out. And that's Steve Splain. <laughs> uh. This time, Steve Splainin, we're talking about Yoshimitsu, one of the OG characters that's been here for quite some time. Let's start it. Yoshimitsu came into the game as of what it said in my manual, he's a space ninja. Now, of course, he has been in every game since then outside of Tekken Revolution, but he's part of the Manji Party, which actually does these Robin Hood-esque kind of heists, steal and give to the poor. They've actually robbed the Zaibatsu quite a few times. Yoshimitsu's definitely going through some trials and tribulations, though, because he's got a sword that's obviously trying to take him over, that takes out the ill will spirits that he's currently taking down as a good guy, and he knows Dr. Boskanovich. And that is Steve Splain. All right, we already know what time it is. It's Steve Splain, and we got a new game coming out, but we got returning characters. One of those returning characters and historic characters, one of my favorite, you can see him on my shirt right here, King. Now, King is King the Second right now, but the first King was actually killed by Ogre. He actually has an orphanage in which he actually takes care of kids, so that's the best story you can have for anything. But during the events of Tekken, the first King actually got killed, and one of the orphanages, the orphanage's kids actually takes up the mantle of the new King. He actually goes to avenge the murder of him, also actually goes to avenge the murder of a second Armor King, that, well, the first Armor King, who was his mentor, who taught him after his first mentor died. And still in Tekken, Eight right now, Steve Splain. <sighs> That's really hard. This time, we're going to Raven. Now, Raven is introduced in Tekken 5, and he's obviously one of the cooler characters out there. He's part of a larger group of ninjas called the Ravens, which we didn't know at the time had an even cooler character, Master Raven, that was leading him, and our newly introduced Victor, who apparently just controls them all. But the fact of the matter is, is that Raven didn't show up in the last game. He did see Heiachi, quote unquote, die in T5. That's probably why he didn't join us in the next game, because he miscalled that. But also hired by the UN, which is also ridiculous, because the UN is hiring ninjas in the world of Tekken. It is a world war, but it makes a lot of sense. Raven, cool ninja, Steve Splain. Speaking of Tekken 1 through 8, a character that has been there the entire time, Kuma. Let's do it. Dude, that is not Kuma. That is Panda. Panda is not the same as Kuma, and that's because it's Ling Shao Yu's pet panda. It's actually still trained in the Mishima style Zaibatsu, but it also has used the same kind of like Kung Fu and Karate as Ling Shao Yu. But it was, that what's crazy is that it's actually raised in the high school for Ling Shao Yu, so it actually gets to travel around. The bear that it was supposed to be up there was Kuma, who she actually hates, but Kuma loves her, and that is Panda. Had three seconds left. Steve Splained. All right, this is a hefty one. I am supposed to break down the lore of Tekken in two minutes. They've already started the timer. It started when Kazuya was a kid and he got tossed off a cliff by his father, Heihachi at the time. Not only did he toss him in there, he's like, hey, look, if you're my son, he'll be okay. He'll make it back. He changed that story a little later, but that's not what happened. Then he activates the tournament. He says, you know what? We're going to have a tournament to see. Since my kid didn't make it back, we'll see who out there, what martial artist can actually take up the helm. What ends up happening? Kazir survives, makes it to the finals of the tournament and says, you know what? Now I'm going to return the favor. Takes the body of his father 
throws it off the same cliff, mind you, the same cliff, just so he knows that there's a bit of familiarity there. And then he's like, you know what? Now I have the control of Machina Zaibatsu and I'm gonna take over the world. Now, when that happens, he doesn't understand that, surprise, Heiachi is still alive. Heiachi climbs out of said cliff, obviously because of the opening of Tekken 2, and actually goes and enters the tournament because Kazuya says, you know what, I wanna take over the world, I'ma start my own tournament. And this is also where Kazuya meets his first, his future baby mama, June Kazama. Now, with that being said, how much time I got? 48 seconds. Now, Kazuya wins the second tournament, like I said before, throws the body off the cliff of his father, meets June, and then we fast forward like 18 years. June is born, he's being trained slightly by his mom, and she's teaching him in the way of Kazama Karate, right? But she says, yo, if anything happens, go find Hayachi. He's like, all right, cool. She gets attacked by Ogre, he goes to find Hayachi, and when he finds Hayachi, he's like, you know what, Hayachi's like, you know what? I'll train you, but not because I think you're good, because I think you have like the devil gene in you, and I'm always trying to control that. But what ends up happening then is that they throw the another Tekken 3 tournament, all new challenges on top of that. Paul thinks that he defeats Ogre. He did not defeat Ogre. Jin goes in there, fights Ogre, wins the tournament, and then Hayachi is like, you want, ah, crap, that's Steve's play. This isn't fair. That's not enough time to explain Tekken at all.